All right, man, let's do this. December 2022 Blu-rays. Oh, man, we got a lot of really good stuff this month. The holidays are coming up. You're going to want to be giving gifts to your loved ones and acquaintances. And as well, they're going to be asking you, hey, man, what do you want for the holidays? And you're going to be thinking, I don't know what's out, man. There's there's so many titles here and there. What is there? Well, don't worry, man. We're going to sex you up. we got a lot of good titles this month, and we're not going to waste any more time. Let's go right into it, man. On December 5th from the U.K., Got a whole lot of good stuff here, man. Uh, from Eureka Entertainment, first up is The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari in 4K. It's wild, man. This is a 102-year-old film that's getting a 4K master, man, or a 4K transfer. I apologize. And, man, this is just one of the seminal classics of not only uh, horror films, but of the 20s as well. I remember the first time that I saw this film, I hadn't been familiar exactly with, um, ex I mean, I knew it was an important film, but to actually watch it, especially when I was younger and I wasn't uh, watching as many silent films as I am now, I think this film still holds up entirely in terms of pacing, storytelling. Uh, the German expressionism is still, uh, every frame of the film, man, is terrific. And the twist ending, which I didn't see coming at all. Eureka always do good work with this movie. Man. And I could have sworn, and, and don't quote me on this, man, but I thought that I heard that Kino was putting out a 4K of this in 2023. I could be making that up. I have no idea. But I'm going to be very curious about how the transfer is on this. But either way, uh, Eureka does phenomenal work, and I have no doubt this is going to be a great release from them. As well as one of my favorite companies going, uh, Indicators, putting out the big gun down. Uh, now, this did have a previous release in the States from Grindhouse Releasing. Um, and uh, if you didn't get that release or you're a big fan of the film like I am, you have this release as well. And Indicator always stack their uh, their discs to the brim, man, with features and different cuts. This one has three cuts on it. And um, I don't know if it has uh, the same features on the Grindhouse Releasing disc. I haven't looked at that. But either way, if you didn't grab that one or you want to grab this one it is there and uh, this is a really good western man this is one that I wasn't familiar with until that release from Grindhouse and um, this is one that uh, if, if you're if you're like me and I'm trying to watch a lot more Levi and Cleef films seeing a lot of his films get released in the past five six seven years from companies like Arrow I mean this is another one that you got to check out for sure uh, The Driver coming to 4k this is a film that a lot of people have seen uh, and have been influenced by uh, Quentin Tarantino and Edgar Wright and this is one that I surprised it's a big one that I actually haven't seen before, so uh, I'm going to be looking to import this for sure. Um, a big one for me on this day, if you guys listened to the 1998 episode, one of the films that made the list uh, was a film that I wasn't too familiar with, but kind of blew me away, man. It's the film Croupier with uh, Clive Owen. All right, just let me run through a few things. As a dealer, you never gamble. Not anywhere. And um, we'll need your picture. What for? For the database can be accessed by every casino in the country. We have the same system for punters. I don't gamble. Ever? I don't gamble, Mr. Reynolds. Hmm. Next point. Friendships between croupiers inside or outside the casino are discouraged. Relationships with females working here are expressly forbidden. We had the same rule in Sun City, but it was impossible to check. Well, this isn't South Africa. We'd know because someone would report it. Believe me, someone always does. Does know or does report. What would happen if I knew something like that and didn't report it? We'd know. There are no secrets in this casino. And you'd be punished. And this is coming from Arrow Blu-ray, and it's also getting a 4K. Now, that is really cool, man. The fact that I believe this is making its Blu-ray debut, to my knowledge. Um, but this is one I'm definitely going to be importing. Croupier, I'm a big fan of films set in casinos as is. But the thing with this film is that I love Clive Owen's performance. I love the story, his no-nonsense attitude. He's a casual, cool guy. He doesn't need to overdo it, man. He's one of these guys who I don't I, I know he was uh, he was a big leading man for a while and I know he hasn't been in a whole lot of uh, big films the past uh, some time and I don't understand why man he's a phenomenal leading man and um, man if you haven't hit if you haven't seen this film man I believe it might still be on Netflix but uh, I definitely say if you're curious about blind buy, blind buying it this is definitely worth it for sure um, another film I had talked about previously on the show and I think I actually mentioned this Blu-ray before coming out this is getting a Blu-ray debut uh, Gary Old Goldman's directorial debut, Nil by Mouth, with um, the lead actor who I always forget his name on, but uh, I'll pull it up right here. But Nil by Mouth, this is one that I had heard a little bit about here and there, but man, this is Ray Winston, by the way. For whatever reason, I always want to say Brandon Gleeson, but it's not. I, I, I'm fully aware Brandon Gleeson is a completely different actor, but for whatever reason, I, I, don't, I don't know why, but... 
Neil by Milf is a phenomenal film, man. Uh, Ray Winstone's performance in this film is frightening. He's a he's a guy who uh, you he's he's almost impossible to be friends with because he has all this rage and this anger inside him, and you see it as, you see in his performance how he's just like a machine that just keeps on going no matter how tired he is. You just see the veins pulsating in his face, and he's screaming and spitting. It's a truly terrifying performance, and I believe this has new commentary from Gary Oldman. Uh, and I'm definitely yeah, this is definitely. Gonna be imported for sure, and I hope that this comes to the states as well. Um, you know, maybe a, I could see this as like a Criterion release or a film like that. But yeah, don't sleep on this film, man. Hopefully, we can get the War Room on Blu-ray as well. Um, let's see here. Also on this day, I'm trying to look in the UK here. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go to the states on November. Um, I'm sorry, on December sixth, we have a lot of good stuff here as well, man. Uh, last month we had Reservoir Dogs on 4K and uh, Tarantino's follow-up, the film that everyone's seen, Pulp Fiction, is coming to 4K as well. And if by some chance you haven't seen the film, this is a perfect opportunity. I really love the standard 4K artwork they did, black and white with uh, Uma Thurman's lips colored in. Not as crazy about the steelbook artwork. I'm admittedly I'm not really a fan when they when uh, uh Studios do new artworks for films, and it's just an iconic scene or an iconic moment. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the the dance scene in Pulp Fiction is, is definitely a, an iconic moment, but it's not representative of the film, and it's, it's anything. It's just a footnote in the middle of the story. Um, but for sure, man, if you if you haven't seen this film, it's just one one of the one of the the seminal films in the '90s. Uh, you know, and independent filmmaking going into the 21st century. Um, uh, actually, I was just talking about this with somebody last night, so I'll bring it up here as well. If you haven't read the book, uh, uh, Down and Dirty Pictures by Peter Biskland. It's a great book about the uh, rise of Miramax and independent film in the 90s and the transition. It has a lot of interviews in that book. Really solid book, man. Um, as well, coming to 4K uh, from Scream Factory, Bob Clark's Black Christmas, man. This is a film that I find gets better and better every time I've seen it. Every time I see it. I don't know if I'm quite in the love category. I think the history of this film and the filmmaking behind it is, is a, I, I find a bit more interesting than the film itself. But this is, I, I think when, this is what people immediately think of when they think of Christmas horror films as well uh it's a really you know it's a really just creepy film man when i was younger this is one of the films to truly get under my skin uh pun intended with the tagline and for sure man a lot of the pov shots which a lot of horror films would do after probably most famously not too long after john carpenter with halloween although bob clark denies that uh john carpenter ripped him off which i mean uh this is, has a great cast as well, man. You got Margot Kidder in the film, Olivia Hussey, and it's, you got these uh, really just upsetting sequences, man, of just walking, these creepy long sequences of the killer walking through the house, and there's something really unnerving about this film. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to upgrade this or not, because I do have the previous Blu-ray they put out, but either way, if you haven't seen the film, now is the perfect time of the year to see it. Um, another 4K as well, this is an upgrade from, uh, now this film's had a lot of Blu-ray releases, but if you missed out on all those, now you got this one. Uh, one of the great films of the 2000s, man. This is Charlie Kaufman's adaptation with uh, Nicolas Cage, Meryl Streep, uh, Chris Cooper, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Uh, this is just one of my favorite films right here, man. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, I meant to say uh, Charlie Kaufman wrote the film, Spike Jones directed it. I always get those mixed up, man, because they work together a lot. I always flip-flop them. Okay, there's a serial killer, right? Well, no, wait. And he's being hunted by a cop, and he's taunting the cop, right? Sending clues who his next victim is. He's already holding her hostage in his creepy basement. So the cop gets obsessed with figuring out her identity and in the process falls in love with her. Even though he's never even met her. She becomes like, like, like the unattainable, like, like the holy grail. It's a little obvious, don't you think? Okay, but here's the twist. We find out that, that the killer really suffers from multiple personality disorder, right? See, he's, he's actually really the cop and the girl. All of them are him. Isn't that fucked up? The only idea more overused than serial killers is multiple personality. On top of that, you explore the notion that cop and criminal are really two aspects of the same person. See every cop movie ever made for other examples of this. Mom called it psychologically taught. The other thing is, there's no way to write this. Did you consider that? I mean, how, how could you have somebody held prisoner in a basement and and working in a police station at the same time. Trick photography. Okay, that's not what I'm asking. Listen closely. What I'm asking is, in the reality of this movie, where there's only one character, right? Okay? How could you... What, 
what exactly would... I agree with Mom. Very taut. Sybil meets, I don't know, Dress to Kill. Cool. I really like Dress to Kill. Until the third act denouement. That's not how it's pronounced. Um, now, like I said before, this has had previous releases, so um, I'm not sure what exactly what features are on this or what exactly will be uh, uh, new about this besides the transfer, but um, I'm going to be picking this one up because I actually did not pick up the previous Shout Select Blu-ray or the previous one before that, so I figured if I'm going to buy it, I might as well buy this. Um, and this is just one of the great, like I said, this is one of the great films, man. Great dark comedy. Nicolas Cage playing dual roles of a... Uh, uh, of a self-conscious uh, writer, self-conscious screenwriter, and his uh, twin brother who who is getting all the success and all of the um, acclaim when his writing is, is much less intellectual and much more derivative and the humor that comes from that, along with si along with a parallel story of um, uh, Meryl Streep and Chris Cooper. This is a really just great film, man, and it's one that every time I see it, it, it still, it just holds up so well. This is just one of my favorite films, and if you haven't seen it before, now is the perfect time to get it. Um, and the big release on this day which I think a lot of people, including myself, are very excited for, is Shaw Scope Volume 2 from Arrow Video. Uh, now, I have the first Shaw Scope set, and let me tell you, man, it's one of the best box sets that I think I've seen for a release, man. That thing is phenomenal, man. Uh, I'm still working my way through the films in that set, but the packaging, the book, man, you can't be beat. Um, the big release in this one, which was surprising that it didn't get its own release, was The Boxer's Omen. And The Boxer's Omen, I think, is a pretty notorious film that was not the easiest to see for a long time. I think it was somewhat available out there, but uh, to my knowledge, I think the DVD was out of print. There wasn't really a good release of it. Um, I'd, I've seen the, I think, but it's been on like YouTube for a while, so if you wanted to see it, it's not exactly a, a, a hard to find. I would say uh, more so not as easy to own. But I could be talking out of line there. Boxer's Omen is a really fun film for sure. I'm maybe not quite in the love category. I do think that about halfway through, I do get it. It does wear out its welcome. Um, but the audience that I saw it with, man, they were really into it from beginning to end. And this is one that I am going to be rewatching for sure. It's just a totally off the walls film. Uh, and this box set, man, I just can't wait for it. And I think what I've heard is that they're going to do one more box set, which I'm all for. Um, because from what I've seen in the first set, um, besides the films I had already previously seen, um, it's just, you know, top notch stuff there, man. It's Truly just a, just a great, great collection, man. <laughs> On this day, we got 48 hours coming to 4K as well as another 48 hours. And I haven't actually seen another 48 hours, but I have seen the first one. Uh, it's classic Nick Nolte, Eddie Murphy, buddy cop film. Uh, two cops uh, who are just basically at each other's throats. It's great, man. They play so well off each other, and this is one that... I think this is a Paramount title, if I'm correct. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it is Paramount title. But I am curious about this. I don't know what the reputation on another 48 hours is, if it's good or not, but it's uh, definitely going to be on my radar for sure. Um, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman coming from Warner Archive. Uh, they're not putting out as many releases lately. I know I know there's been a lot of back and forth, a lot of talk about the the future and state of Warner Archive, but whenever they put out a release, it's always one that uh, to keep an eye on. This is a film that I've only ever seen once, and I enjoy it. I truthfully don't have a lot of memory of it. This was my, I didn't actually decide to rewatch this for the 1958 list, although if I had more time, I probably would have. Um, I think this is a film that the poster and the reputation is probably more well-known than the film itself. Uh, the film itself, I, I, like, I said, like I said before, <coughs> I truthfully don't remember a whole lot about but if uh, I can find this for a good price, which usually can't for our archives, they only go for like about 15 bucks or so, if that. Um, this is one that uh, I think a lot of people uh, uh, will be interested in if they hadn't seen it before. Plus, now it's a good release. So, I mean, there there is that, you know, Warner Archive, I, always top-notch releases, man. Um, one of the big ones on this day which I have a little bit of a bone to pick with, uh, is from Criterion. This is the Michael Haneek trilogy, uh, if I said that right. And the reason I have a bone to pick with this is that it's a, it's a primarily, it's a shallow reason. It's, a, it's, it's no indication on the quality of the discs themselves. Um, I don't want to be negative, man. I really, you know, I'm not a graphic art, graphic, graphics art. Graf, I'm not a graphic arts designer, man. I understand that you have different artists doing different things. And I'm not, I don't, I really don't want to be a jerk, man. This cover art though, I don't know what they're going for, man. This is, this is really, uh, man, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't want to be a jerk, but I really hope that they had, I really hope this wasn't the first, or I, I really hope that they had, I, I don't know, man, this is, this is bad, man, this is really bad, um, with that said, though, 
The collection, I'm sure, will be fantastic. Now, truthfully, the only three of these films I've seen is the first film I actually talked about in Cozy Corner of Cinema. You guys remember what that was? That's right, The Seventh Continent, man. And I loved that film, man. That was one of the best first-time watches I saw this year. A very nihilistic and somber film about life and loss, man. It's truly a masterpiece. Um, Benny's video is one that I've actually, I've had many, many opportunities to see. It's been on YouTube for a while, and then, a, then an acquaintance of mine um, gave me his password and username for the Criterion channel, and I was like, oh, that's great, Benny's video's on there, I'm gonna watch that. Never watched it, um, so I'm looking forward to finally, at some point, checking out that on this. In 71 fragments of a chronology uh, of chance, I'm truthfully not familiar with, but um, this is a definite probably day one as well. Um, so, I mean, shallow opinions on the um, on the display aside, uh, on the appearance or display, whatever you want to say, uh, this is one that definitely, uh, it, when it got announced, this was a big deal, man. So really looking forward to, to checking this out. Um, also, because Seventh Continent was not readily available for a while. I, I think the DVD was out of print, I mean, uh, to my knowledge, or at least it wasn't, it was a little expensive. And, uh, geez Louise, man, what is going on on Blu-ray's website? I may have to pause this for a second, because their website is acting up on me. All right, so anyways, moving on from there. All right, and actually, next to it, funny enough, I see that the VCI 4K of Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things got delayed, so curious about that one as well. Uh, a new one that, uh, was a 2022 film, technically. Well, I mean, I guess 21, technically. But uh, I think got a lot of talk, but just in case you weren't familiar with it, is, uh, Phil Tippett's Mad God. This is a film that I thought was really phenomenal. Uh, I think a lot of people seem to enjoy it, but I just wanted to put it out there in case, uh, you hadn't seen it yet, uh, that this is getting a physical release, and I'm glad. I'd mentioned before that I wish more streaming services would, um, put out, uh, uh, their titles on Blu-ray. Um, Better Off Dead is getting a new Blu-ray. Now, I don't know if this is just a repackaging with new artwork, man, because that last Blu-ray, uh, okay, this is a steelbook. This is coming from Paramount. Um, that last Blu-ray that came out, uh, it was just, I mean, it was bare bones, man, for, and it had some really generic and bad artwork, man. Um, I, I think this is something that needs a pretty good release, needs some new features on it. I mean, I know John Cusack and them is, is, doesn't want to talk about the film and all that, but uh, this is a really great film as well. Really uh, uh, dark, enjoyable film from Savick Steve Holland, man. And uh, yeah, man, hey, he's got to get his $2, man. Come on. All right, let's see. Moving on from that day there, we're going to go back to the UK. So let's see here. On December 12th, uh, let's see here. God, this website, man. I tell you, I don't know what's going on with this website. All right, on December 12th in the UK, we have uh, more Jackie Chan coming from uh, 88 Films. They were putting out a lot of his films at one point. Uh, we have Gorgeous coming out from 1999. This is a big one that I have actually never seen. I I've been familiar with this for a long time, and... Um yeah, this is what I'm very curious about. And as well, on the same day, Snake and Crane, Arts of Shaolin. Uh, I don't think... Okay, this is also 88 Films as well. So I'm glad they're still readily putting out uh, a lot of his films and stuff, man. I think it was 88 and Eureka that were putting out a lot of his stuff. Because I own some of the Jackie Chan UK releases, but I always forget who puts out what. Like, I think I think it was Eureka that put out Project A 1 and 2. Uh, to my knowledge, it was Eureka. But um, I'll be honest, man, I'm really behind on a lot of these releases. I have not picked up most of them. And But, I mean, it's great these are finally getting released because I don't know how readily available a lot of these were. Um, now, I don't remember if I talked about these, uh, if I talked about the Wings of Desire 4K last month, but it looks like it got delayed if I did, as well as the Magic Myth and Mutilation, the uh, long title that will not load, the Micro Budget Cinema Michael J. Murphy, I think got delayed as well. Silent Running coming to 4K. Uh, now, I think this is actually getting uh, Arrow... Yeah, okay, so this is coming to Arrow in the U.S. as well. Uh, Sound Running, co-written by Michael Camino uh, from 72, Bruce Stern. A uh, real, real interesting film, man. I don't th I don't think I love this film. Um, it's just, this is definitely much more uh, uh, somber and uh, uh, I don't even want to say downbeat, but it's very, uh, I mean, Bruce Stern is holding up the whole film, man. At a certain point, it becomes isolated from the other crew members and we just follow him throughout. And, uh, it, it, man, I, it's, it's not a great film, uh, I, I do think the, the, the poster is probably better than the film itself, but I think this is very interesting and worth a watch. Um, let's see here. That might be it for that day in the UK. So moving on to the US, we got uh, some more big titles here. Highlander in 4K coming from, I think, Paramount. Uh, 
Let me check that here. Now, I think this was supposed to come out last year, to my knowledge. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry, it was Lionsgate to put this out. Um, this already has a, a 4K in the UK, which is a bigger release, uh, which I haven't picked up. I don't know if I'll pick up this one or not, or that one. Uh, Highlander is, is, is an incredibly enjoyable film, man. I really enjoy this film, man. Great cast as well. You got Sean Connery. Um, you got uh, Bird, of course. I'm sorry, the great, and the great uh, Clancy Brown, is what I meant to say first. Uh, this is one that, as well, has been released on so many editions and there's so many uh, versions of this out on blu-ray and on dvd i mean it's just it's definitely hard to find it all uh but yeah i mean it's on 4k so there's that uh highlander 2 man you guys ever see that one? Oh boy that one's not very good uh more upgrades coming from scream factory you got carrie coming to 4k this was no surprise there this is uh one of the big de palma films on one of their big releases uh carrie i have not seen this film in a long time man it's one that i uh i'm curious how much it holds up man it, it might. I remember I've never been a big fan of the film, uh, but I, I think it's just mostly general problems with it that I have a lot of Stephen King's uh, uh, work um, in terms of just some some of the character writing and, and just some of the events that play out. Uh, but uh, this is one that, if it's on sale, I'll definitely be grabbing. Um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, 4, and 5 coming from Vestron Video. This was a big one for a lot of people. Uh, didn't Monty Hellman direct one of them, man? That is wild, man. I've never seen any of these. Uh, this is one that, uh, I think, what is it, Mickey Rooney's in 4 or 5? I mean, the irony of that, him him protesting the first film, but uh, yeah, man, this is wild. Yeah, Monty Hellman, Brian Usna, and, and uh, Martin Kratoser. Uh, I've never seen these ones, man, I tell you. I'm a big fan of both the Silent Night, Deadly Nights, and you're gonna, and yeah, I said both, because Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 is a wild film, man. Once you get past the first half hour of the foot of the reused footage oh my gosh man that is a real ridiculous but like real fun movie man big fan of that one as well um yeah, I'm curious about these. I mean, it's Vestron as well. I mean, this is 20 bucks for all three of them, man. They always do solid work, man. They're always fairly priced, so this is a no-brainer. It's definitely going to be a pickup for sure, especially around this time. Uh, let's see here. Coming from, uh, I think this is also from 88 Films as well in the U.S. Uh, I think they've been, uh, they've, yeah, 88 Films in the U.S. Uh, Police Story 3, Super Cop with Michelle Yeoh and Jackie Chan. Um, if, if you, you know that, uh, Criterion had previously put out the first two police stories, and I think in the UK they had a trilogy of, um, uh, all three of them. Uh, this is Dub, uh, Police Story 3, Super Cop, or on a lot of releases, just Super Cop. Uh, have not seen this one. I've only ever seen the first police story, which I'm a big, big fan of, so, uh, gonna be keeping an eye on this one for sure. Uh, let's see here. From got here uh, other 4ks coming uh Coraline is getting a release from scream factory now they're putting out some of the uh animated ones on like multiple releases man they got this and paranorman i don't know what the name of that studio is that does these but they're getting 4ks and steelbooks so i uh not really crazy about some of these cover arts man the the the, the 4k artwork is is really just like just generic as hell man uh now the the steelbook cover art is a lot better but man this is, this is totally just thrown together as well on this day uh spider david cronenberg from 2002 one of his that i haven't seen i only, the only ones i haven't seen are like his brand new films uh besides crimes of the future i haven't seen like okay i didn't see maps to the stars i saw cosmopolis um i didn't see and it's not brand new, but I didn't see M. Butterfly. I didn't see Spider. I haven't seen his original Crimes of the Future. Uh, either way, uh, curious about this one. Not sure what its reputation is. I think a lot of people seem to enjoy it, but I've honestly, of all of his films, I think this is this and M. Butterfly I've heard the least talk about. So at least quality, I have no idea. Um, Ghost Watch is getting a release uh, in... Let me see who put this out here. Now, I think this had a previous release, actually not that long ago. Okay, this is coming from 101 Films. Um, and actually, this is coming out in the UK as well from... I think as a standard edition, because it got previously released there. Um, pretty notorious BBC, um, uh, what is it? Not not even a miniseries, kind of like a, a television event that uh, sparked a lot of controversy. Uh, this is a big one, man, that uh, I've been waiting a while for, because that DVD uh, was available for a while, I think, man, but I never I never bought it. Uh, curious about this one. I, th I know a lot of people already have their copies of this, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on this. I don't know if I want to buy it, but it's definitely interesting to, to get. Also, I should mention before that Gorgeous um, that is also getting a U.S. Blu-ray on the same day. Um, I think this is Blu-ray. Yeah, just a Blu-ray on this one. Um, let's see here. A couple criterion type titles that I have not seen, uh, the recent Velvet Underground uh, documentary and Cooley High from 75 I have not seen, along with some Severin titles, Double Target, Cop Game, and Born to Fight, all of which I have not seen, so I cannot comment on. Um, also on this day, 
Now, this one's kind of buried at the bottom, but it's worth noting if you're interested, is that this is getting a re-release. This is Martin Scorsese's Boxcar Bertha. Uh, this re originally had a release from Twilight Time, uh, and a lot of the Twilight Time titles, like, you know, the Vlog Papers that's coming out again, and uh, maybe Carter's Way, Used Cars, a lot of those titles have since gotten re-releases. And this was one of theirs as well. Uh, this is coming out from Sandpiper Pictures. I have no idea who that is or, or what they are. Uh, this was from 72. This was his third film, to my knowledge. Uh, this is the one that he worked with... Um, he worked with Roger Corman on. That was his, this was his film that uh, uh, John Cassavetes famously kind of steered him in the other direction to get away from this kind of film. Uh, uh, he was there's a whole story there about the relationship with Cassavetes and Scorsese, but it's very interesting how Cassavetes kind of steered him on a more clear path through the Scorsese that we know now would go on to Mean Streets. Um, now I've only ever seen this film once, man. This is an I, you know, I remember not being a big fan of the film. It's, it's, it's more of an interesting curiosity piece, man, especially compared to his uh, earlier work of uh, Guess Who's Knocking at My Door and you know. Um, it's interesting, man. Uh, uh, or I'm sorry, who's that knocking on my door? I'm getting the titles mixed up. Uh, but I think I'm. I mean, this is this is. I might buy for the sake of um, being a completionist for Scorsese's work, but at the same time, uh, this isn't one that I'm really. Uh, uh, we're going to be jumping at to rewatch. Um, I mean, unless it gets better over time, I really have no idea. But as well, um, and this is one that, uh, this is a weird one that is getting a release that, uh, this is a film that I had not heard any talk about and was uh, only available on DVD. It was not streaming anywhere, man. You couldn't find it online. And I, weirdly enough, it's getting a Blu-ray. Uh, Dream with the Fishes from 1997. This is coming up from Sony Pictures. This has uh, David Arquette, uh, uh, Kathy Moriarty. Uh, I have not seen this film, but I actually went ahead and pre-ordered this because this was one that was like, it was, uh, I just, didn't know a lot about, wanted to see, and the fact that it wasn't available pretty much anywhere besides on DVD. Um, very, very curious about this one. I like how Sony Pictures are putting out a lot of their lesser-known uh, uh, titles on Blu-ray. Uh, uh, what was it? Ruben and Ed got a Blu-ray about a year or two ago, which is a real cool film, man. Crispin Glover's in that, um, but that was uh, uh, not so readily available for a while. But, uh, yeah, that's coming on this day as well, so it might be it for that day. Moving on from there. Okay, me scrolling down here if the page wants to load. All right, man. Uh, and the 19th in the UK, you got the Juwan, the uh, Grudge Collection coming from the Arrow video. And I assume this includes all of the films. I don't know if this would include Hadako versus Sayako. Or, boy, I, always, I always mess with that title. Uh, I have not seen any of these films, I believe it or not. Not even the American remakes. So this is one that, truthfully, a lot of J-horror I'm just not that interested in. Uh, okay, this comes with the... Cur oh, Jesus, man. Dude, Blu-rays.com's website, man. They need to cut out the ads, man. This is getting ridiculous. Uh, it has The Curse, The Curse 2, The the Grudge in 4K. I didn't know that. The Grudge 2, uh, White Ghost, Black Ghost, and... Oh, are those two different films? Yeah, White Ghost, Black Ghost. I think are two different films. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've not seen any of these films, man. I, I Truthfully, I'm not too terribly interested in these, but I know a lot of people are really into these films. Um, Even the Ring Collection that Arrow Video put out, uh, you know, I mean, they're interesting films, but they're not really for me. So, uh, But I think a lot of these, again, I don't know how easily accessible a lot of these were. Uh, maybe they were after because of the uh, remakes and so on, but... Um, uh, yeah, it's out there, man, if you, if you want it, man. As well, on this day, uh, this is a collection that if anybody is interested in, uh, I don't know how well this will sell. Uh, this is Dario Argento's Symphony of Fear in three films. This is, has Suspiria, Opera, and Four Flies in Grey Velvet. Um, and actually, at the time of recording this, well, it would have been released by now. Um, but Four Flies in Grey Velvet uh, had but since got a release from uh, uh, Severin Films, so that was one that uh, was unavailable in the States. Uh, he had a shameless Blu-ray, but now it's on 4K. Um so there is that. Uh, so that might be it for uh, the UK there. I'm looking down here, checking if there's anything else. Uh, no, nothing here. So we're going to go back to the US. Uh, more 4K upgrades this day in the 20th from Shout Factory. War Games in 4K. This is a real cool film, man. People sometimes make mistakes. Yes, they do. How can you talk? It's not a real voice. Uh, this box just interprets signals from the computer and turns them into sound. Shall we play a game? Oh. <laughs> I think I missed them. Yeah, weird, isn't it? Yeah. Love to. How about global thermonuclear war? Wouldn't you prefer a good game of chess? <laughs> Later, let's play global thermonuclear war. Fine. <laughs> All right. 
this is one of the 80s, this is one of the, uh, the, uh, the big 80s films that I remember when I was younger, I really enjoyed a lot, uh, and I still enjoy a lot as well, this is directed by John Badham with, uh, uh, Matthew Broderick and Ali Sheedy, a uh, really cool film, you got this hacker kid who accidentally, uh, almost triggers a, a thermonuclear war, so they're, they're going after him, the, the FBI going after him, they think he's a terrorist, uh, really cool on the run film, man, I really have a soft spot for lettuce technology at the time, I love, like, all the arcades and stuff, uh, I have the previous Blu-ray of this that came out, uh, a long time ago, I think, I don't know how bare bones it was, I mean, funny enough, I have that Blu-ray, I never opened it, so I might actually be upgrading this to 4K, because I am curious about this one, um, an upgrade coming from Kino is the Taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3, directed by John Frankenheimer, now this is a really great film, man, this got remade in 2009, I think, I, th I think it was 2009, I don't actually remember. Um, I'm sorry, I say John Frankenheimer, I meant Joseph Sargent. Why the hell, I don't know how I get those two names mixed up. Um, Walter Matthau, Robert Shaw, uh, 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 Jerry Stiller's in the film. Really just great, tense film, man. Uh, and I think Tony Scott actually directed that remake. It may have been later on, maybe next 2009. That was with Denzel uh, Washington and John Travolta. Big fan of this film. Has one of the great great final moments of, of probably any film, man. If you've seen the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's like the, it's one of the most perfect ways to end a film ever, man. Uh, really great film, not gonna be upgrading, but it's there if you need it. Uh, new release, a uh, film that I actually didn't talk about, but I had seen, um, a film that I was very hyped for, was Mark McDonald's The Banshees of Inish Um, this is coming from, I think, just... I don't know who's putting this out. Uh, just Disney, I guess. Uh, yeah, Buena Vista. Uh, this was just one of the best films I've seen this year, man. This is Martin McDonald's. was four for four for me. Um, just a great... Uh, uh, not as dark, weirdly enough, as his other three films. If you think it would be, but um, just... You know, I'll talk more about this at a certain point, but this is one of the best films of the year, and this is a... I mean, I'm going to be buying this, no doubt. Um, at the end of the month, on December 27th, we have mostly some big titles here, so I won't go too long into this. Uh, we have, now this is, I, now this one is strange, man, because this is Mardi Gras Massacre coming from Severn Films, and this already got released by Severn Films, uh, this year, or I think it was last year, actually, um, uh, I think there was a recall on it or something like that, I'm actually not sure why this is getting released, but it came out, uh, and then it was unavailable, you got taken off the site, it wasn't available on Amazon, um, and then now it's gonna be available again, not sure why, but it's there if you missed out on it, um, Nobody's Fool coming from Kino Lorber, this is a Paul Newman film coming in 4K, which is one of the two, uh, Paul Newman 4 Ks. I'm sorry, one of the two Paul Newman films coming this day, actually. Um, not seen this one. I think Brian Sowers mentioned it a bunch as a film he's a fan of. I Hopefully I'm not misremembering that, but have not seen it. Curious about this one. Um, let's see here. Uh, because on the next day as well, the 28th, we'll round it up to the 27th, is Twilight with uh, Paul Newman, Susan Sarandon, and uh, Gene Hackman. Now, I watched this for 98. This is one that I actually have liked a lot more in retrospect, man. This is a really solid, I mean, Twilight meaning, like, you know... Uh, and more so to say, like, kind of like this, like, end of this life, end of your life kind of uh, mystery going on here. Um, this, like, kind of one last uh, uh, big crime going on. But uh, uh, I remember really liking this one as well, or liking more in retrospect, and this is one that I'm definitely grabbing. Uh, this got released previously in the imprint Neo Noir set with a handful of other films. I think, what well, was like Blue Steel and that, or some other films. Uh, so I am very curious to rewatch this, uh, along with a lot of the other. Um, uh, uh, Vinegar Syndrome partner titles, titles coming on this day that I won't go really into, but stuff like the films of Doris Wishman, the third one, the uh, Daylight Years, uh, Mind, Body, and Soul, Minefield, you know, the good book, a lot of stuff there that people are already familiar with. But that, man, I try to kind of rush through this, man. I'm at about a half hour, so I try to talk a little bit faster so I wasn't here all day, but that is uh, December 2022 Blu-rays, man. I mean, holy moly, man. There ain't no shortage of great titles here. Anyways, man, hope you all have a fantastic holiday. Hope you all uh, pick up some of these titles or check out some of these that I recommended and I hope you give some of these titles to your loved ones and acquaintances man it's the time of the year for giving man so we're going to want to do it to uh, absolute fullest extent all right man you guys all take care